Well, hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero Sixty. On this episode, we're going to see if we can get the O, the O, the O, the O. The we're going to get the big O. I haven't had a big O in a while. Now we're going to get the AEM AFR gauge data logging with this little cable here. Yep. Which we've read about, so hopefully that's fine. And you're going to replace some O2 sensors. Yeah, which will be the last O2 sensors on this car to be replaced, and then they've got all freshies. Yeah, we're trying to work out why this thing's killing O2 sensors. Um, it could just be they're old and haven't been changed, but it did kill the one that you put in the AFR gauge. But it's been running a bit weird. We're trying to sort it out. We're trying to get to the bottom of it, which is another reason why we need to get this logging working. Um, and I want Dave to come roll racing on Saturday. Well, look, getting it logging, and then if it's running properly, if, we, if it's running with the new sensors and we can actually log the AFR, then we can see what the car's doing on some logs. And if it's clean, I'll take her out. All right, maybe. Yeah, everyone tell them to just take it out anyway. Uh, right, I'm gonna get into soldering this up, but do you just wanna show the guys what you're doing with the O2s? Which ones you've replaced, which ones you haven't? This one here is the wideband. Yep. So that's another new one. Uh, yes. That was put in for Euro Day, which obviously didn't end up happening. Okay. And these and ones... Actually, we should probably tell them, the reason you keep changing this is the AFR gauge pegs at like 14, doesn't it? 14.8, 14. So... 14 I think it is. And yeah, that basically just means that the sensor's dead. It's not actually reading anything. Um, and yeah, that's actually the second time that's happened since I've owned the car and I've only done about 500 kilometers in it. And so it's just, it's just chewing those sensors. Running but way too rich in it. This sensor also died the day before. Well, the first day back from the panel shop, wasn't it? Yeah, when it was ready, when we're getting ready to go for the roadworthy. Yep. So that's actually out of your car. N54 for the win. Yep, thank you very much. Did, but it, did it add much power? No, I didn't. Oh, did it. That's weird. But look, it got rid of the engine fail safe mode, so it was definitely a step in the right direction. These ones back here are brand new. Again, they were put in for Euro Day. Um, and so today I'm going to replace these ones. Okay, so you'll have four new ones for the DME, and then this one's also a new one for the FR gauge. Yeah. All right, I'm going to leave you to it. I'm going to go do some soldering and give us an update when you're finished. Let's do it. Okay, so that is the connector for the, well, it's a serial connector. We've got the blue wire, which is the, the serial data line, and then the white wire is just ground. So we've got to connect the blue wire to the AEM gauge, and that is at the other end, and then the white wire will just go to ground. How are you going with your O2 sensors, Dave? Just putting it all back together. Sweet. Okay, so you got them in already. You just need to put the boxes back on. Pretty much, put the boxes on, bolt them up, and... Yeah, fire the car up, like. You saying these are a little bit tighter than the original ones? <laughs> Incredibly tight. They they are aftermarket. The post cap ones were genuine. Yep. And that was a very easy plug and play swap. Um, whereas these aftermarket ones, it's like the O2 plug is just not quite right. Yeah, the tolerance isn't quite right for the factory harness. Let's see if they work all right. Yeah, it's wedged in tight. It's just not both of the tabs locked over. Right. I can't get them to do it. Well, let's get these boxes back up and we'll get inside and try and hook up this AM gauge. I'm really curious if we're going to be able to data log that gauge. Well, that's the plan. Fingers crossed, everyone. All right, let's have a look. Now, David has had a look in here already and I haven't, but this is the gauge that we want to connect to and apparently these AMs have an output for data logging, which is very clever of them. And, okay, here we go. So that looks like power and ground. That four pin one is the one we want to connect to. We have the blue signal there. That is the serial signal. The white wire apparently from what I was just reading is a zero to five volt output. So if you were trying to connect it into, I don't know, any system, even like a, Oh man, meth, no, I don't know. But anyway, that's a zero to five volt output, which you can you can program into something and do some of that data, but we're gonna use this one and hopefully that is what Testo is gonna read. So I'm gonna connect or solder the blue wire on this connector into the blue and might just tap into the ground right there. All right, so that's all connected. We've got this wire that just, it'll just sit in the glove box for now, but we can connect it out to there. That's gonna tap into the serial connector. And then we'll come over and check out what Dave's doing on Testo. Yep. Is it Tiesto? That's the famous ballerina dancer. Right, yeah. I always get them confused. 
Okay, so what we've done, we've never actually logged this style with Testo before. All we've done is got an external source and then external source. And then it came up with this window where we were able to select COM port 3. We tried COM 1 at first, but it didn't work. But COM 3 seems to have worked. And then we've got the air fuel ratio of 18.5 sitting there. Do you want to start the car and see if it changes? Yep. And probably also worth, no worth noting that, yeah, you just select the brand of the gauge as well. It had lots of different options to choose from. Santa 12. That is what the gauge is reading. Amazing. Okay, so we've got a connection to the computer. Um, should we work out how to combine it into all into one log? Into one log, yeah. Which I'm not sure how to do that yet. Some more playing and we'll work it out. I'll just turn her off. So you're just saying HTE wants you to log throttle position? Yep, the actual throttle position. RPM? Yep. Obviously don't need to log math because there is no math. Doesn't have one. And intake temp? Yep. Exhaust temp. Exhaust temp as well. That was it from motor values one. I think so. And then he wants ignition timing. In degrees. Ignition angle, okay. So he wants all of those. I believe so, for each cylinder. Like that, they all pop up. It's eight of them. Where's the other one gone? The gauge. Gauge was down here. And I guess we're gonna want the uh, F fuel ratio real. All right. And so then, I'm, one, I'm hoping, maybe we can just hit data log from one. And it'll combine all of them. Yep, sweet. There she is. Just got everything each selected from Should all windows. We start it up before we start logging? Absolutely. Look at the air fuel ratio. You're getting a log. Hell yeah. All right, I'm going to do a test one, see what happens. Yep. Fill all common to blast zone. No, I think that's what we're going to do. Logging. It's restarted. Uh, I think it's working. Maybe. Can you reach the throttle from there? Give it a bit of a tickle. See what happens. I think we got it working. All right, uh, we'll kill the car. We'll actually, stop the data log and then kill the car. Stop the log first. And we'll just make sure we can export that into something usable. So I'll see where it's saved it first of all. Um, doesn't really show you where it's, probably just into downloads, right? 15th of the 12th, that's us. Okay. So it's an XL. Well, it's that'd be a CSV, it's just. Sorry, it, yeah. Yeah. And then, um, so that should, as long as it's a, proper CSV file, then it will just import into Data's app or whatever you want to use. All right, it's time to go do some data logs. Ooh. Got it. Got it in the end. Oh, hopefully you guys can see it, but the lighting's just going a bit crazy. But we're just doing a log, normal driving, just so we got some data on what the car's doing when it's just cruising along. Just make sure nothing's out of whack for normal type low load cruising. Yeah, make sure it's doing what it should be. We have some concerns about this this setup, that's all. We just want to get as much data as we can, but you'll see us again in a few seconds and we'll actually do a power log. But yeah, as, te as Testo's working, we've got all the parameters that we're actually logging and we've currently saved 4,500 lines of data. That's awesome. We've got the AFR coming through and you can see it matches over there. We are good. 13.914. All right. We'll see you guys in a second when we do something a bit more exciting. So we're going to do the log just how we do them in the M54s, which is basically just a third gear load from down low. Yep. We are logging. And I'm going to go. Go. Oh, it sounds so good. That's so good. 
God dang it, that was uh, that was 100% the longest time I've been flat out in this car. Oh really? Yeah. Okay, I'll stop the log. It's saved, we're good. And one thing I just want to get on camera, let's see where boost peaked. So I think that recalls it. We hit 6 PSI. 6 PSI, that's about right. That's about right. And that was with no throttle closures, so that should be pretty good. And we'll head back home and we'll open this up in data's app and see what it looks like. Yeah, sounds good. Bit of a creak there. Yeah, I haven't heard that on any other drives before, so all things to check out. We did have all of the suspensions arm, suspension, not suspension, steering arms off when we did the rod bearings. bearings. So we're gonna just make sure nothing's coming loose. But yeah, we ended up doing some extra logs on the way back, just part throttle. Um, we actually messaged HTE just as we were heading out and then he asked us to get a bit more, a bit more driving information. Yeah. So we got all those logs, I'm going to hop inside, Dave's going to check the steering and let's see if we've got anything interesting. I bet there's, it's all super informative. I, I'm curious to know what sort of timing it's running. Yeah, remember this is the stock ESS tune, so it will be interesting to see what ESS are giving everyone all over the world for their supercharged M5s. Yeah, all right, let's go check it out. All right guys, well, we are back in the house and I've got it up on Zarda's app, which hopefully will be on your screen. Uh, let's have a quick look at it now. We did a few logs, but the one we want to actually have a look at is the, one well, I want to have a look at, is wide the wide open, open throttle. And that's that one there. Now keep in mind, this is the first log that we did. So let's see what we're doing. You can see, RPM is that? Yeah, that's RPM and you've shut off at 7.3. Pretty then, high, high rev limit. Then sort of decelerated. So what I'm actually interested in is the timing. So let's see what it's doing. All eight cylinders. And okay, so when you're off throttle, you can see you're not really getting any corrections on that side. Yeah. So let's have a look on where you're all wide open. Actually, you know what we should do is actually put the throttle position in there as well. Boom. So yeah, yeah that is the section that's all wide open throttle. And you can, okay, you are getting a few corrections and Holy shit, you're running some timing as well. I can't quite see it then. Uh, that is 16.6 .6 degrees on cylinder one. Jesus. That, well, that would be a lot for an N54. <laughs> um, but then it does start, starts to decrease around 3,500 and it comes down. Which, thinking of which, supercharger. So low RPM, it's got no boost. Oh, true. So I guess it would still run quite aggressive timing in the early parts and then taper, taper off a little bit which is what it seems to be doing. So you're getting a few corrections in there. It's gonna to have to do some relearning as well with the O2s, I guess. And yeah, that's a good point. In fact, I haven't even driven it since doing the post-cat. So both the pre and post-cat were all brand new for that, for that drive. Yeah, and we did only, we did two pull, no, we did one pull before on this one. On the way one. to the section, yeah. yeah. So that, that timing might clean up a little bit. You can see from 67.50 onwards, there's no timing corrections. Pretty clean, yeah, that's interesting. So she's running good. Now let's have a look. I'm gonna hide all these time corrections because it's just a lot of mess on the screen. And see what the uh, AFR's doing. Yeah, we'll do AFR. So it's a bit of a wave. Might put intake on. There's, no, uh, okay. Air fuel ratio whilst we're wide open throttle. Yeah. So she's sitting at 18.5. That must be coasting. Yeah, I'll throttle. And then as you start to wind the throttle on. Starts reaching out a bit. Which ends up, then it goes 15, maybe this section here. So 11, and it goes up. Pretty sharply, actually. To 15, and then down to 11. Which 11's nice. And then, holy shit, Ooh, 13. It's it just keeps climbing with the RPM. Right, so at the top of the rev range, that's really lean. Was that 15 then? That was 15. Okay, so that is horrifying. Um, it could be those O2s again. It could just be adapting or... It still smelled fuely driving it. It still smelled like a fuely car. It did. Okay, so AFR seemed very lean. Uh, let's have a look at intake temp, make sure that wasn't doing anything crazy. So you see here, sitting at 48 degrees Celsius, drops down a little bit. I guess that would be as road speed increases, yeah, get some cold bit, air coming in. A little bit of fresh in. air, yep. And then... What it, RPM's that, when it starts to block up again? It starts to get hot at... 5,000-ish, so that's to be when it starts to make boost. Yeah, making three or four PSI, I guess, probably four PSI by there. And then it's 6,150, the temps just start really ramping oh up. God. Up so to uh, 50. Oh, are you, can you zoom out a second and see if, do they cool down again 
after you... No, it doesn't. They don't. Wow. So once you've done that damage, once you've done that one pull on those supercharged M5s, that's they, it. They heat soak. Yeah. Interesting. I would have loved Euro Day. Um, exhaust temp. I don't know what these are, but something the HDE wanted us to log. At 26. That's obviously... Maybe that's 26,000 degrees. <laughs> Yeah, that's, don't know what that reference is, but okay. So that's there. Um, that's about all we got really, isn't it? Yeah, it, it appears to be quite an aggressive tune timing wise, and you're running it wow. really lean. Really lean. <laughs> Far out, this that, is why you've got to check things. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, I'm not convinced that's, maybe it is adapting to those new sensors. Possibly, look, yeah, we, we probably didn't do enough pulls. Well, let's have a look at, so we did the wide open pull first, then we did uh, 20%, 40%, and 60%. 60%. Let's have a look at the 60%, which was the last one, and we'll see how rich or lean that was doing. So this section here is third gear, and we're, we were targeting 60%. 60% however, uh, and, and that, was from, that was first gear, second gear, into third gear, trying to hit 60% throttle in each gear. I was actually watching the throttle position as David did this, and as he got to about 50% what it looked like, the throttle position shot up to 100, but it was in sports mode, so yeah. there might have been some trickery going on in this section that we can see here. But let's just have a quick look at the AFRs. Uh, air fuel ratio is 11th and much nicer across the board. Well, throttle is, is taping down there again, isn't it? Throttle's come back down to 40%. But RPM's kept, kept climbing, so you're still pumping the same amount of air as if you were wide open throttle, it's just not trying to increase the speed that it pumps the air. Yeah. So, but, uh, just, and it's still increasing as well, still not as much as in that, that wide open throttle pull. It definitely looks like a better line. It's not, yeah. oh, it's still got some weird shit going on. Might have to do another log. We'll speak to HT about it, see what he says, but on the plus side, we are now logging AFR. I well, I just wide band AFR. Wide band AFR, and it's mixed in there with the RPMs and everything else that it's reading from the computer. So that is a step in the right direction for that bloody car. I've been, it's, I'm jealous of you guys that you can, you can just, with your JP4s and your 54s, you've got everything, you haven't, you haven't got any yes. aftermarket wideband sensors, you literally just hit log on the... And legit, logging this car is like a two-man job. Yeah. <laughs> One person needs to be fully focused on a laptop. All right, um, I'm gonna edit this out. I think maybe do a couple more logs before... We'll send those to HE, normally so replies reckons. really quickly. Yeah. Um, we'll go from there, but might need to do a couple more and just see if it adapts a bit better. Yeah, before locking it in. All right. Guys, end it off there. Um, I can't remember if I really explained it in the start of this video, but if you've got any questions about how to hook in one of those AEM, AEM gauges to Testo, we have done it. Hopefully I showed it in the video. If you've got any questions, just let us know below. It's a very cool device. Now that we've got, now we're a little bit more familiar with Testo, we can even log things like the X5. Yep. And see, see what it's doing. Because oh. it's, it's so good to see, isn't it? Seeing what, what the timing corrections Timings and stuff, yeah. Yeah, everything. Intake air temps, it's awesome. All right. Uh, the GoPro literally died two seconds before the end. So again, thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace out. Oh, and actually, I will put a link to these data zap logs in the description if you want to check them out. Let us know your thoughts. This is the stock ESS tune. Keen to hear any feedback. But we've got to get this car sorted because I'd love to see it at roll racing. Four days. Four days away. I do. I feel better already just being able to see what the engine is doing. So <laughs> I might book them. Might book it. Do it. All right. Thanks again, guys. Catch you. Peace.